Well, hello and welcome back to Good Knit Kisses. I'm your host, Kristen, and today we are working on a potholder loom. And I've got this uh, loom here from Cindy Wood Crafts. Uh, you can go to uh, Cin, uh, like C E C I N D uh, W O O D Crafts.com or Premium. Uh, knittinglooms.com uh, and they have pot holders. This is the larger pot holder. It's got more, it's got a longer spacing, it's got a wider uh, and longer base. Uh, so it has 18 pegs across and 18 pegs uh, down and um, all you need are uh, two uh, two colors and 18 loops of each color and so today I'm doing a live tutorial so this is from beginning to end and I'm gonna do it all in one sitting uh, I wanted to uh, do it live uh, so you guys get to see it um, from start to finish and we're going to do a series of these I've already done one before and we're gonna do one today and this is the pinwheel pattern and it works uh, the two colors and uh, they end up coming together and forming this little pinwheel design so we're gonna do that now if you're joining me live be sure and click down in the comments below and tell me which one do you think I should do should I do the more coral and green color the colors the coral color of the year and um, kind of a fall color or how about we step it up and go to Christmas here we've got some red and we've got green <laughs> right fall or Christmas which one do you prefer today <laughs> so uh, we are going to um, be using uh, I like to use my Tunisian crochet hook uh, sometimes I like to use this one so I'm just going to show you uh, the two that I have here this is the hook that comes with the weaving loom and this is just uh, an extra hook called a Tunisian hook which uh, is like an extra long crochet hook and then it has this little end here that kind of looks like a knitting needle but it's made to hold lots more stitches so instead of one stitch at a time good morning everyone I see you jumping on I say hello to a few people and then we'll dive in hey Gayla and Aaron hey Shelly good morning Courtney <laughs> hi Kathy and Alicia hi Mickey and Lori and Elizabeth hi Lorraine yes I'm hoping I'm feeling better thank you so much hi Shelly <laughs> very good hi Joanne so she's jumped on coral and green Kathy says fall Aaron says Christmas Elizabeth says both I can't do both today Alicia Christmas Shelly says <laughs> all right so Christmas or fall <laughs> one two we got two for two for Christmas plus the bow so I guess that's three and then we got a we got a one two two for the two for the fall so let's see let me get me some water and then we're gonna dive in if you're just joining me we're deciding which one we're gonna do the pinwheel uh, uh, layout on do the pinwheel pot holder uh, I've got the fall colors which is the coral and the green here the um, kind of softer green and then we have like a more like a tealish green and then this one is red and then a Kelly green for Christmas colors. so Christmas or fall right Christmas or fall I love the fall I love the fall. I love Christmas too, but I love the fall too. <laughs> fall, fall, fall colors, fall colors, and Christmas. All right, I'm gonna go with drum roll. Ding. <laughs> Let's go with. Oh, I'm on pins and needles. What should I do? What should I do? All right, let me count them up. <laughs> Six, seven. I got seven for that. One, two, Christmas, three. Five. Okay, I got more for fall. All right, oh, and fall first. Gayla, you, you cinched it. <laughs> that was the last one. Okay, we're gonna set these aside. I'll do this on the next potholder holder loom, and the next time you'll see me here live on doing the potholder, we'll do it in a few weeks. So I'm gonna do one of these every other week, and then uh, the other weeks we'll be talking about what's going on at GKK and any other live tutorials. So we'll be doing these potholder looms um, uh, on until Christmas, uh, so you'll have lots of them to do over the holidays with kids or grandkids or whatever um, or yourself all right so let's begin so we're going to take our um, color uh, color a and color B 
and we're going to start uh, stringing up our loom here. So I'm going to make my, um, actually I'm going to make green my, uh, yeah, all right. So I'm going to do this one first. All right, so I'm going to start this one across, and this is the warp we're going across, and we're just going to set two of them up, one, two, of the color B, and then we're going to alternate and do color A. Okay, one, two. So, color B. One, two, color A, one, two. Now, I got these loops from Cindy Wood Crafts as well as the loom. It is a large loom. If you like these loops, which are cool and sturdy, they're not your standard cotton loops. Uh, they're not ones that, um, here, let me give it a little bit of clip. Uh, this is not a loop from, um, uh, the hobby store uh, or craft store because they're um, they're a higher quality one uh, and they're they're longer. So I believe it's Harris that I saw on uh, Amazon that makes them for the larger pot holder looms and they look like this too. But um, comparing the prices, unless you get a, like a really large um, bulk um, amount then um, it actually, I think Cindy Wood has the better price. Uh, and if you go with uh, Harris, like I said, I think it's Harris uh, on Amazon. Uh, unless you go with the larger amount, um, you're not going to be saving any more money versus the Cindy Wood. So uh, gauge it. It might come down to shipping for you if you're too far away. But in the U.S., it seemed like it was a better deal to just do the Cindy Wood ones, which go with their looms and you know that they're going to be nice. And she's already counted out all the loops. Okay. So we've got two of each color, every other one, all the way down. I'm just double checking. All right, now that I've got my warp set, then we're going to do the weave. Okay, so the weave starts with, um, we're going to start with uh, A, and start uh, up and down here. So um, this is um, going to be, um, I'm sorry, <laughs> up and down is what you do first. And then I'm going to be doing uh, the side to side. So uh, it was just easier for me placing it that way. Uh, now I'm going to do the, um, uh, do this one right here, which is the opposite color. So uh, I'm gonna just go ahead and go, um, under on this side and over and under and over and so I'm just going under and over both loops here sorry I've got a note on my screen here I gotta get rid of it's blocking my view there we go so we're gonna go under and over all of these loops And we're going to pull this through and I can just put it right under with my finger and then I'm just going to grab it. Okay. Now my Tunisian hook is a little short for this, so I can use the long one. I just want to show you what it looks like with the Tunisian. And then you can also use your fingers. Okay. So now that I've done that, I'm going to do the opposite one over here. Let's show you with this other hook. So um, if you have gone under this first time, you're going to go over this end one. Okay, so instead of going under, I just go right over. And then I'm just basically pushing down the ones that I did before. If I push those down, I can guide my tool over them easily. Okay, and then I'm going to put in A again. So I've got A, and then we're going to do the same thing with A again. And 
and I'm going to turn my hook and start sliding it through. Okay. And so then I'm going to place it across here. Now I'm trying to be careful not to twist my loops. Make sure that there's no twisting in between so it lays nice and flat and you get a really clean design. All right, now we're going to go back with uh, B and we're going to go under over again. You can also, if it's easier, you can uh, start halfway. Uh, you can even use your fingers. So the way to tell is you're just going to go opposite. So the last one went under here. So we're going to go over and I'm going to go under here. See how easy it is with the fingers, especially when it's in the very beginning. So if you want to use your fingers, you can. So I just want to show you a couple of different methods there. And I'll show you the one where I use the tool halfway on this next one. So this is the finger method. Okay. You can just double check that your ends are working correctly. And you didn't miss anything before you move on, especially if it's your first time going. All right, so the next one is a repeat of B. So I think you kind of get the pattern. It's going to be two A's, two B's, two A's, two B's, just like it was over here. It's just the opposite. Okay, so let's do the halfway type. I'm going to just pick a spot in here. I know that this one went under before, so I'm going to go over and just do this. Get my hook up here. Put this loop in. I come back down here, get my hook under. Oops. Right here. Get it under there and start sliding it through. All right. So see, I've got it halfway and then I can just hold on to it and then come over here and put it through. I can even just do a few at a time. So this is how you would do it if you're, say, working on a much larger loom. Maybe you make your own big square loom and you're working with um, fabric that you've cut. That works too. And then you can finish it out with your fingers here. And there you go. Okay, so I don't know if you can start to tell it, but we've got our first little pinwheel starting to emerge. And it's easier to see it once you get a few more on here. And sometimes, depending upon how you are visually, it may take it being off of the loom and all squished together uh, to really tell. I'm going to do much of this with my hands here. Be sure and chat amongst yourselves. We've got Joanne on here um, for any questions, if she's able. And uh, I know she's working on something right now. Just make sure you're keeping up with the color pattern. And the Tunisian crochet hook is best used uh, in the end when we're taking it off of the loom. I like it better than using this system. I like this large potholder loom versus the smaller kid ones because, um, A, because it makes a much better potholder. It makes a more realistic size. Uh, you can uh, stitch four of them together and make a really large uh, trivet. You could stitch um, six of them together and make a, a beautiful uh, placemat. So imagine, look at this now, you can see the pinwheels starting to emerge. Imagine 
having um, four of these and placing them um, next to each other and quarter turning it. So I've got one here and then I turn it a quarter of uh, the way this way and stitch it together. And then the next two are turned in turns. So you have this really cool pinwheel on pinwheel design and have a nice trivet and then make some matching um, placemats, like uh, six of them, whether well, it be a really oversized one. Um, you could even make a nice table runner uh, for, your, for your table for the holidays. Um, the small one, uh, the, the small potholder looms are just, they're just so tiny to me. And they can be stitched together as well. Um, but these are nice even if you're just using it by itself. I will say that you need to use um, <clears throat> cotton loops or um, wool loops if, if you have any. But cotton loops um, are really easy to come by and you can make them easily from old t-shirts um, if you have any t-shirt uh, sheets <laughs> those can be cut up and you can make a ton from that um, we had a t-shirt sheet um, rip one time and so that would make a really good um, uh, reclamation of that if you don't stitch it uh, stitch it together um, so yeah so the finishing of the potholder loom is just as important as the weave And I'm going to show you how to get rid of that loop if you want to know how to get rid of that extra loop in the end. If you're like, I don't like having the little loop at the end. It makes me nervous. Um, I like to stitch mine in. I don't hang my pot holders, so I put them in a drawer. But this is an excellent... Um, loom for this because the metal ones to me the the loops tend to pop off uh, easier I have a harder time with them uh, these are very sturdy you can see they have a big head on the peg um, they're just they don't um, they don't pop off well and they've got a really long distance look at that like from the where the loop is at the bottom to the top of the peg the small metal ones are really short and um, I never like setting that project down for long um, for fear of somebody walking along and move it barely and then it pops off not through any fault of their own it's just a short peg and so these work really well The average cost, once you've paid for your loom, the average cost of getting the uh, loops is about $5 a hot pad uh, from Cindy Wood. Uh, not that I'm here to just tell you about a bunch of pricing, but uh, five US dollars is what um, the average was that I paid. I went ahead and got um, four packages, which will make two uh, pot holders each. So I'm making eight. Uh, so you could make these for gifts, maybe give them um, as a housewarming gift with some wooden spoons or something and, you know, bottle of wine for the kitchen or uh, coffee, um, that kind of thing, or some tea to someone and give them their own little hot pad and they'll use it and think of you. Be a good neighborly thing to give to somebody. Um, so... I think these would be great neighbor gifts. If you like to give jars of cocoa at the holidays, um, this would be great to give along with that. Jars of cocoa mix, I should say, or, um, you know, hot cider, stuff like that. I'm nearly done with this pattern. You see the, how the pinwheels are emerging? I like these colors. Alicia's mentioning cotton uh, uh, cottage looms on Etsy. I have good wooden looms uh, with metal pegs that don't pop off. Okay.
So the reason why you want to use cotton or wool, uh, it's because they're not going to catch fire. Uh, so it, it is important uh, that you use something that's um, flame resistant. It's not going to melt. So that's why, why we use those. And you can use yarn on these pot holders. You can double up your yarn and um, weave along. You could um, tie them off in your strands and have little fringe pieces if that's what you want to do. If the strands are individual, then uh, once you're done, you can pretty much just take it off, just weave in a couple of ends and uh, don't have to finish it like this other. If you're doing a continuous uh, loop version, which is not this pinwheel design, if you do continuous loop or continuous strand, um, when you're done, you can actually pull it right off of the loom. You don't actually have to do the finishing thing, which, which is gonna, what I'm gonna show you in a moment. which is basically crocheting the edges. Get some water. Uh, Kathy is pointing out that caught, I mean, uh, kiss looms can be configured to make a uh, pot holder loom, absolutely. There are a few looms out there that are used for knitting looms and they can be uh, configured easily for that. And like I said, you can use, um, you don't have to use just a square shape. You can do a rectangle shape, but you can do, um, you can stitch them together to make rectangles as well. Okay, last one. So we're ending on the same color that we began with. And this one I'm gonna use a hook. Just to get in there. All right, and my last peg. And you can see I have a colored peg here for start. It doesn't really matter. <laughs> it really doesn't matter if that's where you start or not. It's the same all the way around. Um, but if that's um, if that's what you need to help tell you that. So you can really see this uh, clear design here. I'm just, I'm peeking over um, my design before I, before I finish it off. I like to give it a glance over and see if there's anything on here that's gotten twisted, um, you know, uh, maybe a little strand that got pulled, uh, anything that I need to turn or tweak. So I think I'm pretty good. Uh, I've got a funny little strand here, so I'm just gonna go ahead and take care of that. I'm not worried about trimming that off because I'll just, uh, when I crochet this edge up together, it'll be just fine. Okay. Snooze my little reminder that's popping up. Sorry, hold on a second. Okay. Really love the pinwheel effect. Oh, good. I'm glad you like it, Kathy. All right, so we're going to be picking up one of these loops here. I'm going to move this here so hopefully the comments don't get in the way for the live viewing. Uh, we're going to uh, pick up uh, one of the loops just anywhere I just start on one end and I'm gonna work my way in one direction if you're left-handed you can go in the opposite direction it doesn't matter so I'm just going to pick it up uh, by just placing my hook straight down and then I'm gonna go into the next one and place my hook straight down and pick it up and then I'm just going to lift this back loop over the front loop and let me see if I can zoom in on this There we go. The next one. Lift it up and over. I'm going to do a few of these and show you 
the edge that it makes. You see this pretty little edge that it's making? So uh, because of the weave, that's why you see that it kind of kicks up and then down again, and then up and then down again. So it's going to have a little bit of this zigzaggy effect, but it's really nice with the, the colors that coordinate here. So um, you're going to see double colors as you go. If you've done this before, usually um, all your colors are mixed up. Every other color uh, looks different. Um, but when you're doing these uh, special special weaves, they have a special edge to them too, which is extra pretty. If you do sew a couple of them together um, using your tapestry needle, I suggest using a cotton crochet thread. Um, make sure it's cotton. Uh, don't use a nylon. Uh, and then use that to stitch it together. Okay. Because if you use a um, if you use a nylon thread uh, like a crochet uh, thread, um, I think it's Aunt Lydia's and some other ones uh, that you can use. Um, if you use that nylon, it's going to um, uh, have a lower burning point or melting point than uh, cotton would uh, if you set something very hot on it. This is large enough that a small teapot will fit on it nicely versus the other potholder looms, which they're really small. <laughs> it's more like, a, to me, is more like a coaster size. So uh, you can see that I'm just uh, crocheting along the edges here. Now, if I want to have something, uh, hold on, let me zoom out a little bit. If, um, so right now uh, I've got some good tension, like these are not popping off or anything. If I want to, I could, um, and I've shown this before on my last video, I can uh, hook on this part onto here to kind of keep some tension going. Uh, but I'm going to show you what it looks like without doing that extra tension. So you can check out that other video to see that. It's just that after you um, uh, place one of these on, on the hook over here, you may have to readjust some of these loops. I did last time, I did find out when I grabbed both of them together, it um, didn't uh, go back as easy as it would as if I just grabbed one. So if I grab one loop and hold it on here, it seems to stretch it out. But once you're done, you can kind of pull and get the tension back uh, better than before. So that's that little hot tip for you. You'll see what I mean about wanting tension here in a moment. When I get closer to the end, it'll get looser on the other loops. And to me, it's a lot more critical on those smaller potholder looms because of those smaller pegs. So when we come to those edges, you're just doing like you've done before. You just go straight down. There's nothing different going from the corners. Okay. And I'm just going to kind of pull on this a little bit and show you, see how that looks. All right, so now we're coming to this part where it's getting looser. Sorry, I've got another reminder going on here. Okay. See if I can pull it from the other side so you can really see. It's much looser. So if I pull back on it, I think it's easier to pick up those loops. And this is part of that tension issue. 
So grabbing it from the back side. I'm just going straight down like I was. I'm just not approaching it from the same direction. It's still the same stitch. It's still I'm still going in the same spot every time. That's really just what it is. It's how consistent you are. I'm going to trim off some of these while I see the long little hairs. It bothers me. <laughs> All right. All right, so this last edge is going to be much looser, of course. And then when we come to the end, I'll show you how to finish it off instead of keeping that loop. Two more. Last one. Move this out of the way. Okay. So in less than 30 minutes, I have made a pot holder, <laughs> a hot pad. Isn't that fun? Okay, so if you want to keep the loop, of course, you just leave it. You can hang it up with it, leave it there. I don't like that because I don't like the potential that one of my kids could come along and mess with it or I mess with it or, or get snagged on something and then the loop comes undone and then where am I, right? Uh, oh, by the way, I have really big hands. This is the size. <laughs> These are like man hands. I'm six foot and then big. So I got big old hands. All right. <laughs> so I wanted you to get an idea for scale. Um, I don't have my measuring tape near me. I have this one. Hold on. I have this one near me. Let's use it. Let's use this knitting gauge. So this is uh, over six inches. So it's, um, uh, what did I say that was? That's six seven and a quarter seven almost seven and a half almost seven and a half inches okay so uh we are um you can use this for a hanger like i said uh, you can also come um through and i'm going to split this here and pull it on through okay so i'm basically going to the loop i just made all right i'm going to split it and come through and then i'm going to pull it Okay, so that pulls it right back on through and then I'm actually going to come underneath this other color, right? And I'm going to go, I'm going to grab it and pull it through. Okay. Make sure it's nice and flat. Okay. Now I'm going to come uh, underneath uh, one of these other ones in the opposite way. I'm going to come here and grab it and pull under. So I'm just, I'm working with the pattern that I have. And now I'm matching the color before in this whole area that's got that same color, it's matching that loop up. So it's secured by going back through it. And then I'm weaving underneath here and I'm weaving underneath here. And then the color matches and that's really invisible. And once this gets washed and stuff, it's going to go away. If you want to pull it tight for now, uh, and then once it gets washed, it may shrink up a little bit. So yeah, once this gets washed, it'll probably shrink up to about seven, but it's really uh, nice and generous. It's thick. It's thicker than most of those cotton loops. Um, the other ones are like really thin. Uh, this one I would feel um, really comfortable um, using that on a very hot uh, item and, and gripping it. It has a nice hand to it. Like see how it's bending for me. It's not too stiff, but it's not, it's not enough where, um, anything is going through. So 
feel very comfortable about that. I hope you guys enjoyed uh, learning how to make the pinwheel pot holder hot pad today. Thanks for joining me at Good Nick Kisses. Be sure and check out our video that we have coming out this afternoon on YouTube and Facebook Watch, uh, where we are going to be um, learning how to make the boyfriend hat in, uh, on uh, knitting needles. And I'll be showing you how to finish off and make the special crown using the mock crochet stitch or diamond lace stitch. And yes, this is knitting. It is not crochet. So that video comes out today. And we have a pattern for a washcloth that uh, we've got it on uh, the loom and needles. And it looks like this. <laughs> This tumbling blocks uh, washcloth is now going to be available this afternoon on goodknitkisses.com on our blog for loom knitters and needle knitters. And you can make this for your very own with knits and pearls. So I hope you enjoyed that. You guys have a great day and happy knitting and crochet. Bye everyone.